In the 1950s, Taylor University's student body was rapidly outgrowing many of the buildings that existed on campus. Fort Wayne architect Oris Aish was contracted to design a new dining hall, and his final plan was a four-story residence hall connected via breezeway to a dome-shaped dining hall. The dome was an integral part of our Taylor experience. Basically, the social life of the campus revolved around the dome. It was absolutely beautiful on the inside. Huge windows the entire way around. 20-foot ceilings, and so you had a really nice sense of spacing. It was a pretty spectacular space. When it opened, meals in the camp dining hall were actually served family style, with students required to sit in an alternating male-female pattern around the tables for each meal. Dinner was an interesting experience, let's put it that way. You never know who you're going to eat with. And they'd bring the food to the table and you passed it around. Girls always had to wear um, heels and stockings and a dress or a skirt. The guys always had to wear a jacket. Guys yeah, would come in from the field hot and sweaty, you know, but they had a jacket on. The new Hudson Dining Commons was constructed in 1972, and on April 27, 1973, the former dining hall reopened as the new student union. The, the prime driver for the change was the growth in the student body, which it, it simply meant it was so large now, you just can't fit everybody in the same room. Renovations included the construction of a second floor within the dome, which housed multiple offices, such as the Taylor Student Organization and the Student Activities Council. I just have lots of memories of time working in the Taylor World Outreach part of the dome. It was quite the sending hub. I just remember meeting the world. The world came through that dome. There was something magical about it being our awkward space. Taylor University was booking concerts with Christian uh, contemporary music, and a lot of those bands actually were coming to Taylor in the Dome probably two to three times a semester. So the Dome became a, a place to not just study, but to go and see these bands that are more independent. The first floor of the Student Union also featured a recreation area with ping pong tables and pool tables, and of course, a dining lounge featuring the grill and the ever famous grill cookies. The best cookies ever were the grill cookies. Literally the best cookies that have ever been made on this planet were created in the Union, the grill cookies. In 1997, Taylor student Ben Eisner and his wife Rebecca opened the beloved Jumping Bean in the Union. Once the coffee shop happened, the Dome became overnight like an increasingly vibrant culture where students were now going out of their way to get coffee. I'm convinced it gave 10 to 12 more years of life to the Dome that it wouldn't have had otherwise. I lived on Brotherhood, which is the third floor of Morris Hall. We all got special permission from the university to climb up onto the top of the Union and spell out Broho with our bodies. It was our floor photo for that year, and it was in the yearbook. The Samuel Morris Hall that was attached to the dome was demolished in 1998 after the new and current Samuel Morris Hall was constructed. So the dome stood alone. The dome that we came back to is not the dome that we experienced when we were right. at Taylor. It really got to be divided up. Maintenance on it became more and more um, expensive. And then the Bourne Center came into play. With the opening of the Bourne Campus Center in 2016, every office and department formerly housed in the dome relocated to the new building. When everything shifted into the Boren Center, it really became this kind of weird hangout spot. Some students like really took a shine to it right away, but also like some students were trying to get used to it. During the COVID-19 pandemic, some students were actually able to consider the dome their home, as it was used as temporary housing for students in isolation. I felt so free. It was the weirdest thing. I remember I actually kind of miss it in spite of the fact that I was enclosed in a building and was asked by the university not to leave. I decided to 
do like a little video log while I was there. So I like brought my phone and I was like, there's no one here. It kind of felt like a hotel stay, like a little escape from the rest of campus because suddenly you don't have all your obligations and you just have time to be by yourself. I lined up all the beds and like jumped across them. It was fun. So as we start off our service, we're gonna do a litany of Thanksgiving. Cause as we think of this space, ultimately we are grateful for the Lord's provision. And as Jenny said, what is our process of remembering that there is a time to tear these things down? Letting go of some of the things that you need to let go of in life on a campus, there's a time for it. Was the purpose of the dome fulfilled, you know, at, at the end of its time? I, I think so. It's bittersweet that it's gone, but it's more about the people and less about the building itself. So even though the dome is no longer physically present on campus, we have our memories, those of us that experienced it as students or employees, and we also have the future to look forward to as we see the ongoing construction of the Horan Academic Center um, and look forward to its completion in the near future. It's the kind of thing that we rejoice for the experiences we've had, but hey, we move on to what God has for us now. <laughs>